Hi everyone, it's Rhea here, and today I have with me a fantastic guest, Grace Kai. Grace made Yusuko Camp in 2017, and today she's here to share her experience on how she made, you know, silver, gold, plat, and camp with all of you guys. So, thanks for joining us, Grace. Thanks for having me. So, I guess the first thing is, when did you get into Yusuko? Okay, yeah, so I got into Yusuko when I was in ninth grade, because my school, like, is a STEM kind of math and science magnet program, so we have a computer team and they just introduced everyone to USCO in about the first week. Um, so I decided to just get started after that. Like previously in middle school, I had already done a bunch of random programming with Python and stuff. So I was like, oh, I want to explore algorithms because it sounds like an interesting way to like use logic to like learn. Well, what high school did you go to? Oh, I went to Montgomery Blair High School. It's in Maryland. And were the higher ups in your computer science club uh, in Platt and or Camper level? So one of them was, but the rest of them, I think, were in gold. And so you hear about it through this computer club, uh, and then you took a December contest, I'm guessing? Um, yes. How did that go? Oh, yeah. So initially, I was really bad. So I passed bronze the first contest, and I got into silver. Um, and then that was, I stayed in silver for basically like the rest of that year. Um, yeah, so because I went, okay, initially I was doing Yusuko with Python, so everything was like really slow. Um, so like I could like do the bronze, but then once I went to silver, like everything just got really bad and I didn't really know a lot of like things that you're supposed to know at the beginning, like BFS and DFS. So yeah, I guess like when I actually, started to learn algorithms more seriously was at the end of ninth grade um yeah so i went to like one of those camps that teaches you kind of different algorithms um and i guess like i was it was like specifically to prepare you for use co so i was like taking the gold course there and then i learned a bunch of different things like shortest path and like mst and various um algorithms just like at that place and I was just like it was like pretty long or it was like two weeks of just like focusing on algorithm coding so I just like yeah practiced a lot during that time and so once you learn all the algorithms um what about the different plot topics yeah so I guess since at the place that I was learning, there were multiple divisions at the same, like, that were all, like, kind of in the same area. I could, like, talk to the kids that were in Platt and, like, ask them about what they were doing, because after I had, like, done the problems for gold and stuff, I could just, like, go and be like, oh, can you teach me what you're doing? So that was my first exposure to Platt-type problems, and then I would also just go on the USCO website and, like, look at flat problems and then also code forces um was really helpful i think like division two d and e problems were the ones that i looked at particularly that matched around platinum level problems so while networking with the platinum kids they were teaching you some of those things um and you also were looking at the problems from the website and also code forces yeah. And so you were just combining all of these things and learning all the different topics that were showing up? So, yeah, I had a pretty specific way of, like, integrating new information, too. Like, I had this log. Um, let's see if I can find it. But basically, I would, like, list all the problems that I had done and then, like, put thoughts on them afterwards. So, like, if there was a better solution than the solution that I had used um, or something like that, I would, like list it out and say like how I could have like came up with the intuition to use that solution instead. Um, so it was like very analytical and like for problems I didn't like succeed at solving in contest two, I would also like analyze them and like then go back later and um, try to solve them. But it was a lot of thinking of like how I would come up with a certain way of thinking, not just like saying, oh, I got this problem wrong, let's move on. When there was a problem, so you're saying that like when there was a problem you couldn't solve, instead of just reading the solution, implementing it and being happy, you took it like a step further. And you said, what could I have done to have gotten this problem? 
whether it be yeah. in contest or out of contest. Would you ever yeah. refer back to this log later? Yeah, I would refer back to it a lot. And then, like, if there are problems that were related to problems I had seen before, I would kind of, like, try to form connections of, like, oh, this is actually, like, very similar. Um, and, yeah, I would also just look back to, like, kind of track my progress and see if I was getting better. So, yeah, I think it was useful. And I want to go back to when you said you were taking problems from both the Yusuko site and CodeForce's diff 2 d &E. How did you pick your problems? Was it just today I'm going to randomly go from Isuko or Div2? So I did the most recent ones first. Um, I mean, it was kind of random. I think as long as you find problems that have topics that are going to be like useful and also um, are problems you don't know how to solve, it's like sufficient. Like on Code Forces, they were most, it was also just mostly like the most recent problems like especially like if I would participate in contests, like just like those problems and yeah. How did, how do you think participating in Code Forces contest directly helped you with Yusuko? And would you recommend Code Forces over like at code or code chef and the other websites? So I have not used at code. I use code chef a little bit. I think it doesn't really matter. I just like Code Forces cause like it has tags for different types of problems. So you can like search for, I mean, maybe other websites have this too. I actually don't know. Um, and then also, like, you kind of know what to expect because it gives you the divisions. And the other thing is, like, in contests, you don't, like, see the individual test cases. Um, so you kind of have to, like, really make sure that your code and your logic is solid. So I think it's good practice for that. Mm -hmm. It's actually not as easy as code, but yeah. Sorry, you were saying something? Huh? Did I cut you off? Oh, no, I was just saying that it's not the same as Yusuko since you can see which specific test cases you failed. But, like, I think it's, like, a good way to be more solid with your programming in general. Yusuko, once in a while, will add in a couple of test cases at the end, but it's not very common. Mm -hmm. Would you ever sort the code forces problems by topics? Yeah, especially if it was, like, I got a particular problem, like, wrong in contest or something like, and then had read the solution about it and thought about it, like, I couldn't just, like, do that one again, right? So I would just, like, search up other, like, applications and, like, yeah, it was pretty useful. And so you made Yusuko Camp in 10th grade. So mm -hmm. from the beginning of ninth grade summer, you learned all of silver, all of gold, mostly all of platinum, like, your scores were <laughs> yeah. very high in platinum. So how long were you studying per, per week that summer? That summer, so while I was like learning with everyone else at that like place, I was doing probably like eight hours a day. I feel like, I don't know, I was pretty intense about it. A lot of people didn't take it that seriously, but I kind of like, I tried to like do every single problem and like, like think about it. And then after that, it wasn't, like, I was also doing other stuff during the summer, I think, but, like, I think it was, like, one to four hours a day, approximately, of learning content, and, like, yeah. One to four hours is a huge range, so. Yeah, it is a pretty big range. I guess it, like, depended on the day, right, because, like, sometimes I would get really into a problem and, like, want to, just like continue like analyzing it, but sometimes I'd be like, oh, I, sh I, sh I, have I should do this, but I don't really feel like it. So it took like one hour. I guess like in terms of like weekly, it's still, it's still kind of a large range. It's, it was like, uh, I would say eight to 14 maybe, but then there's also like not time where you're like directly thinking about it right but like when the problem's like marinating in your mind which i don't really count and that was kind of just like it was like always floating around somewhere in the back of my head that sounds like it wasn't you were focusing on the number of hours you were putting and you were more focusing on how to optimize every single hour that you spend coding yeah definitely i think this is really important actually because like in my first year like i also like looked up algorithms on Wikipedia and stuff, but like I didn't really get anywhere because I wasn't like thinking about how to, like what I could improve the most in and like 
how I should, I guess, like optimize my learning. That's really interesting. So you're saying that when you were in ninth grade, you spent a similar number of hours a week, but you didn't make that much improvement. But then in 10th grade, you optimized the way you were studying and you just like shot up. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was like, I did spend a little less time like in ninth grade, but I feel like improvement wise, like quality of work to hours like was a lot higher in 10th grade. So, yeah. And when you say you quality of work to hours, was this kind of like what you were discussing earlier that you were analyzing what mm -hmm. you did wrong for each problem or was there something else to add in there? Yeah, I was mostly analyzing. And then like also like I had to learn C++, right? Cause I was always doing Python and I was like putting this off cause I was like C++ looks so messy and I don't really, I don't really want to touch it. But like, just like, I think it's actually in terms of learning in general, like forcing yourself to do that thing that you don't want to do is really helpful a lot of the times and it'll probably improve your performance a lot. There's a reason you don't want to do something and the only reason you care about it enough to decide you don't want to do it is because it's kind of important, I guess. Mm. And then let's fast forward to uh, 10th grade December contest. So did you advance straight to platinum or to gold or? Yeah, so um, yeah, that was a really intense weekend because like I did silver, I a silver and then I did gold. Um, so it was just like the whole I just went through the whole like sequence, I guess, during the December contest, and then I was in platinum for the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess it was it was like the preparation paid off basically. So you're taking these platinum contests, um, and did you like was it how did you do on the first contest that you took in platinum? Um, I think I got four hundred something. I don't remember. Nice. Was this like one full solve and then some partials or partials? Yeah, I think so. I can search it up too. I don't, but yeah, I think that was what it was. And how do you feel about your score? Cause I know you got higher ones on the future contest. So did you? Oh, I mean, I didn't feel bad about my score because I was in silver the previous um, <laughs> like year. So I was like, oh wow, I'm so cool. I finally did it. So, like, I didn't expect to get past gold, so I guess I was pretty impressed with myself, but not really with my score on Platinum in particular, because I kind of expected it to be hard. I think 400-something is actually would have been high enough that year to make camp, um, but you did up your scores quite a bit, if I recall correctly. So between the first contest and the second Platinum contest, did you study any differently, or was it just the same Div 2 and Platinum problems? It was basically the same thing at some point. I think this is also really useful too. Like I met a bunch of people who are also studying for USICO and like there's like resources that get passed around in the community. Um, like one of the people I knew had like this list of like all the topics in USICO and like different problems that like you could use to like reference each of like the topics. And that was really helpful too. So I think like definitely like talking to other people and like figuring out what they're doing is like a helpful way to learn and also like make friends. Were there any topics that showed up in Platinum that year that you hadn't seen before? Yes, I don't remember what they were, but I think like most of the time there was something that I didn't like, or at least like a way to solve a problem that I hadn't heard of before. Um, I know for a platinum problem, there's just way, way, way too many topics to learn all of them. So it's, at least for me, it was a matter of optimizing which topics are most likely to show up, learning those and getting really, really good at those. And then a topic that may show up once every three years is probably not worth my time as much. Mm. When you had this, list of, when you had the list of topics um, from your friend group, did they have like which ones to learn first or which ones are less likely to show up yeah so i just pulled up the list basically it was like divided into like um division first so there was like bronze slash silver and then there's like more silver specifically then there was like silver slash gold and like on and on um some like 
individual topics also like had their own categories like DP um, and data structures, just like because there's a lot of like different like variations of it, I guess, and they're like pretty common. But yeah, there was like a lot of different problems too from a bunch of different websites. So it was like helpful, I guess, in terms of just like finding new places to find problems and also like practice. What websites are the problems from? Um, yeah, so there's code forces, there's the um, like Peking University online judge, which is like, it's like a Chinese website, I think. Um, there are some from the USCO website, there were some from, um, I'm just going through right now and like looking at all of them. Um, there are some from like this ACM website, which I don't really know about. There's um, like spodge.com, like the Sphere Online Judge is another one. Uh, yeah, that's where most of them came from. But just like, yeah, various online judges. Did you end up going through all the problems on this list that you had? Um, no, there were a lot of them. I guess like, yeah, similar thing in terms of like quality over quantity, but I think there was like 250 ish problems. So I didn't, I didn't want to go through all of them. And also some of them were like lower divisions. So I didn't like really look at them. So in terms of like just motivation and stuff, um, because having to sit down and code for eight to 14 hours every week, to some could seem like a chore. So were you just motivated every day that like you were just super excited to, or do you ever have to like extra motivate yourself? So yeah, it wasn't always like exciting. I guess like it's important, I think, to have like some kind of natural interest in it other than like, cause I know like some people at my school did it because they were like, I want to get into a good college and look cool. And I think like, while it's valid to care about your future, like if you don't like have some kind of natural interest in it, you won't like be able to put in all the time that's required. Um, I guess most of the time I liked it because it was just like a nice way to express logic. So it's like very peaceful, very exciting. But like, of course, especially when you think about really hard concepts, like it's really mentally tiring. So I think like what I did was like, if I was in the middle and I was like really tired, I would like take a break for five minutes, but then like force myself to come back to it afterwards so that I wouldn't just like start procrastinating and doing other random things. And then also like consistency was helpful because like basically when I got home after school, the first thing I would do is like open up a problem and like look at the problem and like think about it. And like then later on in the night I would do my homework. So it was always like, it was kind of like natural for me to like go home and like do this like problem solving before anything else. Sounds like you were just super into it and you're like, when I get home, the first thing I want to do is look at a problem. <laughs> and I mean, it was more interesting than homework. I used to do, used to go to uh, procrastinate doing homework. And also it was actually a good, pretty good de-stressor. I was just like stressed about something, work on a problem, no longer stressed. <laughs> Oh, what happened if the problem was, like, hard? Then that would not be very pleasant. Um, but <laughs> I think just thinking about the problem was was what helped me, like, de-stress. It's just, like, you can just focus on that one thing and, like, everything else is just kind of, doesn't really matter. That makes sense. Do you, when you were doing, like, your problems, did you ever have, like, huge bugs that you would have to work on one problem for hours and hours to try to debug? Oh, yeah, definitely. So actually, like, one of the first things that I used C++ for actually was, like, Facebook Hacker Cup. I think this was actually still in ninth grade. It was, like, the only contest that I did other than Yusuko. But I, like, was trying to figure out how to use maps. And, like, it took me, like, it took me way too long. It took me, like, it took me, like, the whole day or something of, like, thinking about it while I was doing other things. Like, eight hours to fix this bug and I forgot what the bug was but at the end it was like really dumb too um 
but like it happens occasionally, especially like once things get more complicated, I guess you also get better at like learning where to debug or like where things are likely to go wrong. Like, um, but yeah. I think that makes sense that you get better at figuring out where things are more likely to go wrong. Um, for example, I, I know that in my input reading, it's very, very unlikely that I will have a bug. So I just like shove all that on one line, like a very, very long line reading and all the input. Do you like, do you make your code very readable or do you, do you shove it in? So I guess readability, like it's readable to me. So the variable names aren't like going to be all descriptive and everything. Cause the, I feel like that's just a waste of time if you're like trying to be fast, but like I do try to make things like not messy like I don't know how to describe this but I feel like some people like put like these really weird like break statements in their code or like things that technically work but are like very odd implementations like I try to have a clean implementation so that everything kind of like is nicely structured. I think clean implementations also come from thinking about the problem clearly. In my experience these mm -hmm. random breaks come in when you're not really sure what your algorithm is doing and you're like, let me just try this, see, see if it works and just hoping it works. Mm -hmm. Do you use define statements and such? Um, yeah, I did. I used one for like the main thing that I used it for was um, binary index tree. And then I think for union find, I also did. Or do you mean, wait, do you mean just like defining functions or like defining specific objects? No, like uh, hashtag define int long long or hashtag oh, those. for loop. Sorry, yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess I varied between this. Initially, I had like a really, really long list of defined statements. Um, so like, for example, like for loops that started at zero, I would do like F zero R, which I think is a thing a lot of people do. Um, but then I started like, getting rid of most of my defined statements because it was mostly because other people I knew were getting rid of their defined statements because they said that I don't I don't really know why I think it was like like first it like declutters your code but also like sometimes it's like nice to just type like things the way they were originally meant to be um or yeah, I'm not sure. Like some things I kept, like the for statement defined things I kept. But a lot of the things I guess were also like, they just didn't come up that frequently. So it was like, not worth it to have them there. Some of the main ones that I really liked were like the for statements and also for print statements. Having the finds was nice because that way is when I'm debugging. I'm more likely to print more things and debug faster if I don't have to type a lot of characters. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So let's go back to your contest so you first one you get like between four and five hundred um in the second and third i believe were your scores closer to six hundred um like seven hundred i can check actually okay so i got 556 on the january one um and then 744 on the February one. Wow, is so. that like two full solves plus partial? Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, any, let's, are there any other tips you have for Yusuko contestants before we get into the questions that people posted? Um, I guess, I mean, I feel like everyone's gonna say this, but like, just like have fun and enjoy yourself. I think it's like really important to enjoy yourself if you're gonna commit to like such like a long journey. And also like something else, I guess, like think about what you wanna do with it after just like high school, right? Because there are definitely people who like still do competitive programming in college and like take it like really seriously. But I think like high school is a good place to like try it out because you'll have a lot more like different opportunities in college. So like you can just kind of do use go when there aren't as many other CS opportunities and like see if that's something you want to continue. Did you do Yusuko after 10th grade? Um, so not as seriously. I guess like I moved on to doing research in 11th and 12th grade just to like kind of like explore 
um, other areas. But yeah, it was definitely exciting and it was a good time. Cool. Um, yeah, I've asked people for questions and I have a view here. Okay. Um, in contest, what's a good strategy if I'm shooting for Guernsey as a junior? Should I go for the easiest and then try to snipe subtest or go for two and do subtest in the last hour or so or something better? Wait, what do they mean by subtests? Oh, subtests. Um, yeah, actually, in this most recent ESECO year, after we already graduated, they added oh. subtests in for all the problems. So, like, 20% would have this constraints, 60% is constraints, and full solves the normal. Oh, those types of problems. Okay, I see. Um, okay, I feel like... Wow, it's been a while since I've done this, but I think like what I would recommend is if you can tell which ones are easy, then like definitely just get the easy ones out of the way first because like it makes you feel better about yourself, right? And like then you'll be more confident in solving the other problems, which is like definitely helpful. But I think at the, the beginning, it's hard to even tell like which problems will be easy. So at least like look over all of them at the beginning. Um, and then Okay, I think it's worth taking, this is a hot take, I guess, but I think it's worth taking an hour to think about problems only and not do any coding. Um, so then with like the subtasks, like with the easiest subtasks, you'll probably be able to like know the solution like pretty quickly. So you can just, at the end of your like thinking, if you like really don't have like any other ideas, just like code those up only. But if you end up like coming up with like a full solution or like something better then you'll be able to do that instead without like wasting your time coding up things that only solve subtasks first. I, I agree with that um, but I also think that there's a little bit too much emphasis here on getting full solves. The way I see it is if you get like a 40% subtask and a 60% subtask and a 40% subtask you're probably in a really good spot to make camp with that score and with no full solves. I mean, like, if you can get a full solve, more power to you. Yeah, I guess that kind of leads into the second question a little bit from the same guy, which says, usually I make most of my progress on a problem in the first 20 minutes or so, and then none at all other than random bursts of thought that aren't motivated by anything. How do you keep making progress on a problem you're in a contest if you're absolutely stuck? So kind of in that thinking time that we were saying to do for the beginning, mm -hmm. how do you make more progress after the first 20 minutes? Okay, so I think there's like two things that you can do when you kind of run out of steam on where to go next, which is like, A, like move on to a different problem and maybe you'll subconsciously generate more ideas for the problem that you were thinking about before, or like B, I feel like it's really easy to get stuck in like, a belief like oh I need to solve this problem this way because I already like have like part of a solution formulated this way so like why can't why can't I figure out the rest so like taking a step back and like kind of like trying to approach the problem from a different angle um, is helpful I think it's also helpful to draw out just like small test cases and like think of like all the possibilities I think is like good for getting ideas flowing but like I mean, like sometimes it's the case that you, the problem really needs something that you haven't really learned before. So you're kind of just stuck and like, that's unfortunate. But I think like, it's important to like keep trying. Like even if you think you don't have any ideas, like maybe 20 minutes later, you will. I think I agree that you should keep trying, but it seems like this guy is saying he doesn't know how to try. Um, I totally agree that like switching back and forth between problems because then the problem you're not working on is working like in the back of your head, which kind of gives you like a double time. Um, and there's a lot of other things you can do to connect. I'd say like in terms of connecting the amount of time spent on a problem with your odds of getting it right, definitely drawing out a bunch of subtests and also like breaking it down into a smaller problem and try to solve the smaller one is two good things, two good problem solving strategies in general to work on problems. Mm -hmm. um, third question, same guy again. What are some good free resources target, targeted towards Yusuko? 
Um, yeah, so I feel like we've touched on this kind of a lot. Um, I recommend Code Forces. I recommend Competitive Programming 3 or I guess now exists. Um, I don't know if that's free or not, but it's definitely worth the investment, even if it's not free. Um, and then like, just like a bunch of online judges, like you can like probably search up like Spodge and like POJ and like all these things. Um, yeah, I actually like the Usico explanations of their solutions. I think they're pretty good, like if you actually like get through them. So those are helpful too. Yeah, I also think in response to this question, sort of what we were saying earlier that there isn't a lack of quantity of problems out there. It's more of using the problems to get like high quality practice. So there is no lack of free resources. Code Versus has like thousands and thousands of problems. Shouldn't be an issue in finding free resources. Um, if you're bad at math comp, is it better to focus on that than just practicing problems? I don't think so. Okay, so coming from someone who is not very good at math, in my opinion, um, I don't think, like, there are some things that, like, math will help you in, but I think most things, it's not that important, like, graph theory-wise and stuff. I think it's actually, like, a very different skill set, so definitely problem solving is much more important, in my opinion, um, because it actually, like, helps you get better on the thing that you are trying to get better at. I think problem solving definitely agrees the number one thing to focus on. And in terms of math comp, like, I've never even made Amy. And they still let me into camp, so, you know. Yeah, same. Um, is doing many random problems quickly more or less effective than topic-based practice? I feel as though lower-level USICO problems are more standard than CF, for example. Am I correct in this? Topic-based practice instead of random problems. I think topic-based practice is good because you kind of like get in the mindset for like solving a specific type of problem. I think it's also like, okay, there's something to watch out for here because it's helpful in the sense that you know when you're doing a certain topic, like um, practice problem type thing, like you know that that's the strategy that you're supposed to employ to like solve it, right? So like if I'm doing a DP problem, I don't have to like think, oh, I could be doing something else. Like, so it's helpful because you're just like practicing that specific skill. But I think like what the best thing to do is, is to start with topic-based practice and then just pick a random problem and see if you can do it because you wanna like know if you can like tell what you're supposed to do to solve a problem too and not just like only be able to solve a problem if you know what you're supposed to employ. When you were doing code versus problems, did you have tags turned on or off? Um, I think I had them on. I didn't know you could turn them off, actually. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, last question here. Which problems other than past USICO problems are the best to practice with? I think we Wait, touched which on problems other than USICO problems? Yeah. Are the best for Yes. Practice? Oh, I, I mean, I recommend code courses mostly. Awesome. I think we got through a lot of great information on how to prepare for USICO, what to do, what not to do, such as if you want to do math, do math, but don't say it's for USICO. <laughs> um, so you, you also do like art and such, right? Mm -hmm. Where can people find some of your art if you want to check that out? Um, yeah, so I have an art Instagram at intruging. It's I-N-T-R-O-O-G-I-N-G. -O -O it's like a play on intriguing. Yeah, that's interesting. Nice. Um, Do you have some yeah. demos that we can like put on the screen afterwards? This is an example of Grace's art. You want to check that out? Go to her Instagram. Are there any last pieces of advice that you have for any Yusuko Platinum students or even gold, bronze, and silver trying to make camp? Yeah, so... I guess like targeted more towards people who are just getting started, like don't be discouraged when you see that there's a bunch of divisions to go through because it's definitely possible uh, if you work hard and like everyone starts at bronze, right? So like when you, I feel like when I was younger, I would like look at like those like older people in my high school who are in cool divisions and I was like, wow, they must be so like naturally smart, but it's actually like 
it's a lot about the work that you put in and I feel like no one really talks about how much work they do because it's like I guess maybe not just not very interesting to talk about or something but like it's important to know that there's like a lot of work that goes into getting that far and that you can do it if you try. And you can do it in short periods of time. It doesn't need to be like six months for one division or anything as clearly as you can tell by your story. Uh, and yeah, thanks for joining us, Grace. Cool. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.